back again in the studio and continuing with looking at the Raspberry Pi. Uh, last video I did some unboxing of all this amazing stuff. I got um, CGL wide angle lenses uh, and telephoto lenses and the new Raspberry Pi high quality camera which I'm really excited about and a box of Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte computers. So today I'm going to run through the beginning of setting this up. This is a bit of a, an exploration um, and going to do a little bit of modifying and then move on to the software. So let's get started. So I've got my Raspberry Pi camera and I've got a Raspberry Pi Model B4 which we looked at briefly and I've got a selection of cases. This is actually a case from a Raspberry Pi 3 and if I take one of the threes that I've got here and open it up and we have a look at the circuit board between a three and a four you'll see that they're pretty much identical the differences are more RAM faster basic same organization output GPIO pins here across the top but on the side you'll see now the Pi 4 has two mini HDMI outs, whereas the Pi 3 has a single large HDMI out. And when you have a look at the top, on the end, you'll see they both have four USB ports and an Ethernet port. But on the four to the three, the Ethernet port is swapped around. So a Pi 4 case, of which I have one here, you'll see it has the connections on the side and the altered arrangement on the end but this style of case and probably a load of others will fit a little bit so I've got a case here that um, will take my Pi 4 this is a Pi 3 case and it'll clip in and there are side cheeks but on the Pi 3 case because the Ethernet port is on the opposite side the hole is a little smaller so I introduced the case to my friend Mr. Craft Knife and they had a brief discussion removing this part carefully making sure that you don't slash your fingers off or anything unfortunate like that and after a little bit of gentle clearing the case agreed with Mr. Craft Knife and now clips in there's a little bit of extra space here but we don't mind about that and then the sides will clip on unfortunately because this side is different to this side we leave this one open but here we go finding it on the floor it just gives us more ventilation for speed so that's all set up it's ready to go we need a power supply which I've got which again takes a slightly different port to the previous Raspberry Pi 3 but I got a couple of those power supplies and we're kind of ready to go I've got an SD card here which previously had Kano on it so I'm going to flash this SD card put a copy of Raspbian on it install it and get it going we get these things out of the way so we have our Pi 4 we have an SD card. We don't need that box anymore. We don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. 
and in the here I have among the multitude of old second hand weird vaguely antique tripods I thought this might do for mucking around in the studio so we carefully open our Pi 4 camera 2 high quality And it comes with a nifty little screwdriver for doing the, I think this is the back plane focus to set the focus. So it's pretty straightforward. And if I screw this into the tripod, it's a standard tripod mount and there it is which is kind of neat that it fits on straight to a tripod nicely which uh, i think i can find on the shelf now here we go i'm, I'm in my studio so there's stuff all over the place reasonably organized this is an older previous Raspberry Pi camera. So you can see this is in a, a nifty little plastic case that I got extra, but it's a much smaller circuit board when we compare the two. And the CCD, the charge coupled device, this is, a, I understand, a Sony sensor, 12.5 megapixel, 12.3 megapixel, is much smaller. And we have the addition that we can change the mounts, but on the back it has the same standard ribbon cable. So this is the old camera, which you could get um, with an IR shield and not, so that it would be able to essentially see infrared and see in the dark. Put this away for a moment. I've got my camera. And uh, just for a minute, for convenience sake, I'll unscrew this. Put that back on to keep dirt, dust, and spit out of it. And we need to pull carefully this connector and take the metal contacts facing us and slot it in just here. And then we push down each side carefully. That should be ready to go and clip the top of the case back on and there is our camera ready to go so what I need to do now is take my pie with the camera choose a lens to install and I think I'm going to go with of the two lenses that you saw I had last time I have the 16 mil which I'm calling telephoto but probably isn't and from CGL electronics I believe they're based in Shenzhen uh, I'm going to try the six millimeter wide uh, unscrew the back lens cap carefully screw it in and the lenses seem quite nice so far the mounting here is uh, sturdy it seems well engineered and that's all metal body is relatively heavy it looks nicely engineered um, and that is kind of ready to go so in a minute I'm going to set up and cut to downloading a new Raspbian flashing it onto this SD card in boot it run some basic tests and then I'm going to install open frameworks 
port some code over and see if we can get open frameworks to talk to these cameras. And if we can, we can then start doing some really cool funky stuff based upon this. Fast, cheap uh, Linux-based platform, uh, high quality sensor, relatively cheap comparatively, and this additional interchangeable lenses, which is really cool because if we can get these to work, we can start mucking around and making our own lenses. And, and there's a project where I've been taking uh, old scanners, uh, like, you know, printer scanners, and modifying them to turn them into landscape cameras that would do slit scan mechanically. And we can do all kinds of things about making pinhole cameras and mucking around and building our own tilt shift. And also, because we can run this battery powered, we can go put software on it and go and wander around without needing to take a laptop or whatever else if we're building our own cameras and mucking around. So next video, I'm going to install software, boot up, run some tests. And also a couple of people have been asking me, what's the image quality like? And I don't know. So I'm really keen to find out. Uh, a couple of people are saying that it's really, really good compared to what I don't know. But let's try it out and see. Uh, and if we can make this work, it's going to be a really interesting basis for building our own cameras for all kinds of things, whether we're doing computer vision work or um, custom camera stuff, uh, sensing, portable things, who knows. So next video, uh, we'll go through that. So hit the subscribe and um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.